Wilson coming your way again. It's always a pleasure having fellowship in the presence of God. Welcome to Faith Credo, our weekly devotional. Now let's share a word of prayer. Abba Father, we are so grateful to you. Thank you for a fresh new day. Thank you, Lord, for new opportunities, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you order our steps. Thank you, Lord, that you guide us and lead us, O Lord, to a desired end. Let your perfect will be done in our lives. Hold us, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. What a blessing once again. Now, I don't take it for granted that you do make our time to share this fellowship with me. Hallelujah. God is so faithful and he will come true for you. Our theme today is follow the process. Follow the process. And our anchor scripture is Isaiah 49 verse 8. Let's hear the word of God. And he says, this is what the Lord says. At just the right time, I will respond to you. On the day of salvation, I will help you. I will protect you and give you to the people as my covenant with them. Through you, I will establish the land of Israel and assign it to its own people again. Hallelujah. Now, let me share this story with you again. And I believe you will be inspired and blessed. So just about two months to uh, three children being seven years, I decided to teach them another skill, how to make their own breakfast. Hallelujah. Now, already they can handle the microwave, they can put it on and off, you know, and so on and so forth. But here, they are going to prepare their own bread. And that is a bit dicey. Why? Because now they want their tea slightly warm. Now they will have the bread, you know, neatly cut and then with a spread on it and then cut in small dices, you know, equal parts, so neatly. And then they will sit back and be picking it and having their breakfast. So on this day, I brought out a loaf of bread and I handed the bread knife uh, to my son and I said now I'll cut it so okay I'm going to cut it so he placed it on the bread and then pressed it down was pressing the bread knife down on the bread and of course you know that would not be possible so I said do a front back movement and the bread will you know you can slice it and so he proceeded to do that and of course the the bread came out but not as neat as he will have it. It was rough and all that. He wasn't pleased. So it was the sister's turn. And so the sister took over, applied the spread. Of course, somewhere at the edges, you know, what not could it be as neat as mommy or daddy, you know, when we prepared for them. And so after he applied the spread, he proceeded to cut it into dices. And of course, they were not equal dices and they look even more uglier now. Needless to say, I had a very sad twins on my hands and my boy blurted out, Mommy, what have we done to you that you are doing this to us? The bread looks so ugly. <laughs> and the sister, you know, heaped on it and said, we don't like this bread. It doesn't look beautiful. What would we we'll do with this? Ah, that reminds me of how we believers, you know, have our moments with God when things don't go right with us. And then we get angry and then we blast at our God. Why me? What have we done? Am I not serving you the way I'm supposed to serve you? What are you trying to do? I believe in you. I've been doing the right things. I've been giving my offerings. I've been paying my tithes. I've been evangelizing. I've been winning souls. I've been serving you. Why are you treating me this way? We get angry at God. In fact, 
so upset that sometimes we even shout, you know, and do all manner of things. In fact, in those seasons, when God is trying to teach us new lessons or probably to let us climb the, the ladder, you know, take us to new levels in life, we don't like it much. There are seasons of pain. There are seasons of anger. There are seasons of frustration and not getting it right. Now, let me mention it now that our twin are now getting to their nine years and they can comfortably cut the bread the way they want it and the way they like it. Now, guess what? If they have not gone through the process and the pain attached with the process, they might still be waiting on us to cut out the bread for them. They wouldn't grow. Hallelujah. Ask yourself how many times you have missed on getting to the next level with God simply because you are angry at the process. You are angry at the pain. You just don't like the pain. You don't want the process. There's no way you will grow without the process. Jeremiah 29 verse 11 says, For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope. Hallelujah. Beloved, that plan can only work out in a process. Hallelujah. It can only work out in a process. And we do not need to disregard the leadings of God. God's intentions for us are very well. In fact, if we have our way, God should forget about whatever lesson he's trying to teach us. But believe you me, the next level is more exciting than where you are now. And it might entail you going through certain struggles, certain pains, certain rejections, and certain disappointment, certain fallings. Yet, when God is with you, certain rising. I pray for you that you will accept him and accept the process and may God help you to overcome in Jesus' mighty name. Now, what are some of the things that we should do when going through the process? Number one, hold on to the word of God. Number two, be patient. Number three, pursue and focus on your assignment. And number four, be joyful in the process. If you are able to incorporate these things, trust you me, God is going to come true for you. Don't give up. Don't give up. Beloved, that plan can only work out in a process. I want to entreat you, go through the process and you will definitely come out joyful. May God be your helper in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. And question for the week. Mention two or more situations that you have fought the will of God for your life simply because the process appeared difficult. How did it end? Action point. Note down two things you can do to encourage yourself anytime it appears that God's process is difficult and painful. Faith declaration, I will wait on the Lord till my change come. I will remain steadfast and joyful. Amen. Now, Bible reading for the week, day one, Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 11 and 1 Timothy 6 verse 15. Day two, Isaiah 49 verse 8 and 2 Corinthians 6 verse 2. Day 3, Acts chapter 1, verse 7, Isaiah 55, verse 8, and Deuteronomy 32, verse 4. Day 4, 
Ecclesiastes chapter 8 verse 6 and Philippians 1 6. Day 5, Jeremiah 18 verse 4 and Hebrews 10 36. Day 6, Exodus 2 23 to 25 and 1 Peter 1 2 to 9. And finally, the seven, Zachariah 13, verse 9, and Mark 9, 23 to 25. Now, let's share a word of prayer. Abba Father, we thank you for the process. It might not be peaceful, it might not be joyful, it might be full of pain. It is a land that we've not walked before, but we are confident that you would lead us and see us true. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, dear friend, remember I did mention last week, from next week, we'll be entering into our season of spiritual warfare, a supernatural encounter season. And I want to encourage you, you know, from next week, you need to, you know, spend time in the presence of God. I pray that you'll be able to lay down your stomach and fast a little. You know, we have all kinds of fasts. You can engage in any of them, but especially that one that you can, you know, go without food if possible. We want to engage the supernatural. We want to see the hand of God work out for us. Even as we go through the process, we want to see God come through for us. And as we enter into the season of birthing, the season of delivering our breakthrough, our healing, that God is going to give you a testimony. I am believing God with you and we will be having seasoned ministers coming on board to pray with us. It's a season of prayer. It's a season of warfare. Get all up. It is time to make a change. Till I come your way again next week, do remember to share faith travel widely so that others can be blessed. Do have a pleasant week. God bless you. Amen. Reverend Julia is a counselor, children church minister, conference speaker, and a teacher of God's word, grace with a healing anointing. For bookings and updates on her messages, devotionals, and related events, please call 055-081-2255 or 020-77-58227 or send an email at rev.juliaoju at gmail.com. Like and follow her social media handles on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram at Rev Julia Oji. So she comes your way again with another session of the Faith Cradle. Stay strong and favored. God bless you. Connect with Apostle Freddie and Julia Oji for a heavenly experience of glory with a host of other believers at the Miracle Revival Chapel International. Friend, join any of our services on the days on your screen. A divine encounter awaits you. God bless you.